folks, welcome to another edition of Random Questions here live at the LAPC. We're here at the 10K main event with a participant that is not participating. Uh, we have the 2006 world champion, Jamie Gold. Uh, Jamie, uh, you're not participating today. Got the press release, everything came out because you have a very special uh, Hollywood tournament to uh, set up and go, a little uh, Oscar after party. You want to tell us a little bit about that and what it's uh, being put forward for? Sure, yeah. Uh, Matt Savage, who's running the, uh, the event here, our wonderful tournament, tournament director, has agreed to do this with me tomorrow night. So um, he's going to shut down the event here tomorrow night at 9 o'clock so he can be with us at 10, but I have to work there all day today and tomorrow. So um, it's, uh, it's for Children Uniting Nations. It's the after party from the Oscars. Mm -hmm. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Uh, Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, the Black Eyed Peas, Pierce Brosnan, Jennifer Aniston, and about a hundred other you know, celebrities from Hollywood are coming over right after the Oscars to play in a little poker tournament. Um, we're raising money for uh, the Foster Children's Foundation. It's called Children United Nations. And um, the problem is that in America, uh, more than 50% of, of children do not graduate high school and a lot of them are in foster care or have nowhere to live and they're part of the system and the system isn't being funded right now. So what this organization does is that they train mentors and they find that uh, with a proper mentor 95% of kids will actually graduate high school, not have to turn to a life of crime. You know, They say that more than 87% of the criminals in our justice system uh, come from these kind of Homes. These foster homes are not having any kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, parents to bring them up, and so they feel like if we can change this, it will really change the world because it will cut down crime so much that um, it's actually now in uh, countries all over the world. Children Uniting Nations um, is the name of the organization, and Daphne Zimmerman had started it, and. Um, Bill and Hillary Clinton are involved in it, and um, some really great people have donated a lot of money. Yeah. And so it looks like we're going to raise anywhere from five to fifteen million dollars in one night, which is pretty amazing. So, um, nice. so when they asked me, I, I had already bought into the LAPC, but uh, we had to uh, ask for the money back and say uh, we're sorry. And you know, I was we did want to announce uh, the new deal that I have with my new sponsor, Ace, but. Um, we had this opportunity, and I asked them, and they said it immediately they donated money and created this event for me to run yeah. tomorrow, and it was yeah pretty amazing. And so that's uh, you know one of the big reasons why I went with this site is because they're going to donate a portion of all of their income to these charitable causes that I believe in, as well as I'm donating a portion of my income um, to these causes. And so, so not just the Children Uniting Nations, but also oh yeah, no the MBA ALS Foundation and the Michael J. Nice. Fox Foundation and the Monto Williams MS Foundation. And, all the charities that I work for, they're going to be donating through a new foundation that I'm creating um, so that we know that the money's going to the right place. And Yeah, I feel really, really lucky. And, you know, there are a lot of tournaments for me to play. And I'll be going back on the tour, and I am going to go to Europe and do the whole you know, world tour again this year. I took two years off just to do charity events, but I'm going to be back on the tour, and I feel like we can really make a difference. And so I wish I was playing here today, but there will be more time for me to play poker. Right. Well, that's great. Can you tell us what uh, makes Ace a little bit different? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's so much fun. You know, this is if you want to play against the best players in the world, there are plenty of sites where you can go do that. This is not that kind of site. This is the site where you can have the most fun, where you can run it twice if you're both all in. You can rabbit hunt. You can uh, show one card. When you talk, there's a bubble that comes up over your avatar, so you can actually it really looks like you're talking to each other. Um, they put the percentages up when you're both all in if you want to see what the percentages are, the next card, the next card as they come. Um, they have a, a helper on the side if you if you need to know about whatever your outs are, what your percentages are. It's the most friendly, easy to use, greatest software that I've ever seen. And so I'm really proud to be working with them. And of course, yes, the, uh, people say, well, come on, they paid you such a crazy amount of money, why wouldn't you work with them? But it's not as if we didn't have other offers, and they knew about the other offers that we had, and we didn't put them in competition with anybody. It's, they paid me what they thought that I was worth. Everything I ever asked them for, they gave me, because they really believe in everything that I'm trying to do with bringing poker into the mainstream and helping poker get legalized. And so we all have the same commitment to giving back, to making poker the most fun game it could possibly be. And as I said, if you want to play against the best players in the world and not have the best shot of winning, 
there are plenty of places to go to do that. But on our site, you have a great shot to win because maybe the best player you're going to have to play against is me. And I'm working while I'm playing. I'm watching television. I'm, I'm doing my work. I'm checking my email. I don't even pay attention when I'm playing. So I'm kind of giving away my money, as I've showed in the first few days where I've donked off, I don't know, fifty to $80,000. But it's okay because they're giving me, you know, kind of an unlimited bankroll. It's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Oh, that's nice. You know, about 50000 a day I can blow off. So um, so there's, there's a lot of gamble that I can I can play. There's, there's a little bit of juice in the pot. Yeah, we're, and, and they're, they're, they're adding money to every tournament. They put a bounty on my head. If you play in this $100 tournament, I think, you know, there'll be like 50 people playing. They'll give $1,000 if you knock me out. They'll give you 250 if you knock out my mom. That's tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, 8 o'clock, uh, I'm sorry, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. They're paying people to beat up your mom? Well, not to beat her up, but, but they're putting a bounty on her. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she plays on there now all day, every day. All right. Um, so she, I think her name, my, my name is Jamie Gold on the site. Her name is Jamie's mom. Ah. Um, and people keep asking, is it really you? Yes, it is absolutely really me. People can fake my name on other networks, but on, on this network, on the Merge Network, on Aced, if it says Jamie Gold, it's absolutely me. Beautiful. I like it. Now we're going to get on with what I really do, which is random questions. Now, strangely enough, the first one has to do with your mother. Don't take this the wrong way, but what's the most embarrassing situation your mother has ever put you in? What's the most embarrassing situation my mother has ever put me in? Uh, when I was young, she tried to take me out of school um, and uh, make me... Uh, she was trying to accelerate the process for me to go to college when I was very young. Yeah. Um, so she had me take the SATs when I was 12 years old and tried to push me, and I it kind of freaked me out. I just wanted to kind of like hang out with my friends and have fun and you know be cool or whatever I thought was cool by not you know skipping ahead and doing all of that. And she really embarrassed me because she would come to the school all the time and try to make these things happen for me. And it, when I was young, I had a hard time spending time with my mom. I was very embarrassed by her. Well, hopefully that's all behind me. You yes. and your mom seem to get along. Really oh, I've always loved her, but she, when I was young, I, she used to embarrass me. And now I absolutely love her. I'm so proud of her. And I love, I, I invite her to the tournaments and uh, charity events with me, and she's awesome. All right. Well, here's uh, the next question coming up there then is you've often said that you want to be known as the world's best bluffer. You don't know if you can ever be the world's best poker player, but you want to be the world's best bluffer. If you're not there yeah. yet, who is the world's best bluffer? I'm not sure. I don't. It, there, it, Top three? It, well, I, I, no, I really have never seen anybody that I thought that that was their great skill. Um, I'm sure there are better bluffers than me, but you don't you don't see it very often. I think the best bluffers are the ones you never know. That's. that's great I talk about it all the time, so mm -hmm. I have a feeling. You know, just the, the obvious best players in the world are the best bluffers because no one ever knows that it's happening. If if you know they don't show their cards, so I love to show my cards whether I'm bluffing or not, and I feel like. You know, it's just, it's something more for my own personal satisfaction, that I feel like I, I can accomplish that in a, in a shorter period of time. You know, to be a, the best, playing on the level of the best poker players in the world, you need to play for 20 years, I think. Yeah. Or at least, like the kids who now are playing on the internet, 24 hours a day, eight tables at a time, they're accelerating their process. These guys now are so good. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't compare myself any. When I first started playing, I did. I think a lot of people fall into that trap of trying to see how good you really are, and none of us know how little we really know when we first start playing. So, it's all a learning process for me, and I hope I'm getting better. But at the very least, I know that I can, uh, I can give away a lot of money online, and I can help other people be introduced to this great game of skill that has elements of luck, not a game that they think is all luck with a little bit of skill. I do believe it's a skill game and it needs to be legalized and so, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think the best bluffers in the world you'll never know about because they don't want anyone to know they're not, that they're bluffing. That's a good way to go. Complete this sentence. If I could beat blank, all right, of blank, my life would be complete. Beat. If I could, if I could beat blank at blank, my life would be complete. Uh, no offense to your question, but there's, there's no competition that I could ever win that would complete my life. Uh, okay. No, that's, that's a great do, this, you answer them honestly as you want. Yeah, all I ever wanted to do was win the World Series of Poker as a competitor, and I did that, and I don't feel like my life is complete at all. 
Um, I don't feel like I ever have to win another poker tournament to complete my life. Um, in poker, I've accomplished, in tournament poker, I've accomplished everything I've ever wanted to accomplish. That's all that mattered to me. Um, now, I want to be known for someone who helps get poker legalized in America, for someone who brings poker into the mainstream, for someone who uh, raises as much money as they possibly can. I don't want to be the one who raises the most money for charity because that means nobody else is doing more than me. I hope that everyone I ever know does more positive work for the world than I do and the world would be an amazing place. So I'm in no competition with anybody, um, but, um, but I'm just trying to do the most that I can do and that, that satisfies me. All right. Here's the next question. Would you rather be blind for life or make $20,000 a year for life? Um, I would rather make $20,000 a year for life. All right. That's just a good way to go about it. Sure. What's the worst groin injury you've ever sustained? I don't know. I don't remember having groin injuries. I was I I always wore protection when I played in uh, in you know really physical sports. Um, I was definitely smart enough to uh, guard the jewels. Um, but um, no, I don't ever remember. Uh, yeah, I don't remember having a. I'm, I'm very lucky. You know. You're a groin injury free. So no, far, that's that's so a perfect far. way to go with it. Now, would you rather be stuck in an elevator with Bob Stupak or Michael Jackson? I don't know either of them. Um, That's a pass. No, you can no, say I, I, I get the implication that, that it would be a scary proposition for, for some people, but neither of those would, would, would freak me out. Um, I, don't, I don't see Michael Jackson as being able to, uh, if the rumors were true, you know, overpower me in any way whatsoever. And I, don't, I have a feeling that from what I know about Bob Stupak, he's lived a very interesting life, and he'd probably be really interesting to talk to. Um, so probably Bob. I'll tell you a few stories. Yeah, probably that would be more interesting to me, you know. Yeah, I mean, but I have nothing against Michael Jackson because I don't, I don't know what the truth is. You know, people very often, people believe a lot of negative things they've read about me in, in the press without finding out what the real truth is. People still believe that I've done something wrong that I never did. Um, people don't want to know the truth very often. People just like to think negatively of people who have found success. Can you sum all the rumors up for the truth in sure. three sentences or less? Oh, sure. Um, people thought that I decided to not pay somebody that I absolutely owed, uh, you know, made a commitment to. Um, they don't understand what the commitment was, but I kept that commitment. Um, they decided to sue me because they did not want to pay their taxes in the UK. Because in the UK, they're citizens of the UK. You don't, at the time, you didn't have to pay taxes on gambling earnings. Right. I would, which means my, I would pay half the money in taxes and give away half the money, theoretically. And that means I'd come out with nothing. So they were going to still tax me in America, is what I believe. Um, so he decided to sue me before we could work it out. And when you, somebody sues you, you have to protect yourself. And I did, and we settled it very amicably. And there really was never a problem, but a lot of members of the press did not do their homework, and so a lot of the public don't do their homework, and I don't expect it. It's so much easier to believe the negative. It's so much easier to believe that I'm a bad guy. Hey, anyone who's ever known me... judgment on occasion, you know? Do, yeah, I do too. And so, but anyone who's ever known me knows how unbelievably ignorantly I am generous. I've given away most of my money that I've ever made in my life to friends and family and great causes, so it's a little odd that I'm judged as the one who was not being generous. Uh, the whole reason that I had to pay someone because I was overly generous in the first place to a stranger. Um, he did not buy me in. There was nothing like that. People created that whole story that somebody bought me in and I had to pay them. He never bought me in. He didn't put up any money. It was just an agreement to gather stars to Yeah, I, he, the, he was uh, going to help me do something that, that didn't exactly happen, but it's okay. And I didn't fall. I paid him anyway and I told him I would. But he got very, uh, you know, uh, he did something that, that, that I didn't appreciate by uh, making me look bad and suing me. And so we had to handle it. I'm not allowed to talk about what no, the, what, what the lawsuit, you know, how it came out, but... Uh, but I am allowed to talk about why it happened. And if people would just stop for a minute and think about the logic of it all, why would we leave the money in the cage for two weeks? I didn't, nobody's ever left a dollar in a cage for two weeks after they win. Why would I leave $12 million there? I didn't know how to handle it. I didn't know how to do it right. And then I got sued. What would you do? 
Exactly. Defend yourself. You defend yourself as best you could. That's, That's right. all I could do. And I also, my father was dying, and I wanted to spend the last six months of his life with him. So as opposed to going on all of the chat shows and TV shows that I was invited on, I decided I'm not even going to dignify this crap. And by not dignifying it, people assumed that I was guilty. Well, that's perfectly fine. So, I realize that's a very emotional thing. I appreciate yeah, you sharing no, it with I don't, us here. I, don't, I actually don't, don't have a lot of emotion about it. I just, it's just baffling to me. Not about myself, because that's over with, and most people seem to know the truth by now. But mm -hmm. it's baffling to me how many people just write people off because of something they hear in the press. Don't believe everything you read. Unfortunately, members of the press are all not as honorable as you are sometimes. You know, uh, there's, there's pe there are people who sit and blog who have no... Um, Connection to reality? Right. <laughs> and people take what they see on the internet as truth automatically. So, you know, if I just told you, you know, the sky was falling, you don't instantly believe that. So it's just amazing to me that people, forget about me, it's just of what people believe because they hear something about a, you know. I don't know if you remember recently there was a, a car chase in L.A. and they started telling people that it was this famous DJ or Chris Brown or whoever it was, and it wasn't any of them. It was just to create a story because it was more interesting. That's so. how it goes. Well, let's move on to a high point, I think, of watching you, where I've really enjoyed it, and the new season's about to come on, High Stakes Poker. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see you on this season? Or? No, um, but I, uh, I uh, helped two of my friends uh, go on the show, mm -hmm. and, nice. I, and I went to support them. And, um, Nick Cassavetes and Sam Simon will be on this year, who are two Very of nice. my friends, you know, who are very successful Hollywood professionals. Um, we love Sam Simon. Love Sam Simon. Love Nick Cassavetes. Love Sam They're Simon. awesome. Yes. Um, and so, um, you know, Nick has a new $40 million movie coming out with Cameron Diaz, and he did Alpha Dog and The Notebook, and he's amazing. And so the two of them are like the Hollywood guys on the show this year, and so I was really happy that um, in my absence the two of them played. And so... Um, you brought two yeah. live ones to the game. Yes. They have to love you. So for they're that. very happy about that. And uh, <laughs> my next tournament will be the Heads Up NBC. And, uh, nice. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play. I thought I was playing here today, but that just wasn't possible. But uh, okay. every major tournament that I can make physically, uh, I will be at. Have you been working on your Heads Up game? Uh, I have. Yeah, we just saw a blistering pace set by young Vivek Rajkumar and several other guys who just kind of floored us with yeah. their ability to play heads up. So Yeah, isn't he great? Yeah, we hope to see the winner of this one added maybe next year to the uh, roster of Who the won? NBC heads up. Vivek. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's great. Down. Had to had to win twice against an undefeated guy in the last event. Wow, who'd he beat? Uh, he beat Chris Moore, who is a uh, online I know who player. Chris Moore is. Yeah, so he's uh, he managed to take that down. Oh, great. So if Good you came him. up in that situation, how would you handle it if somebody wanted to t told you, I want to chop the money, and you had to win two matches against him, what would you do? Um, you know, in general, I'm, I'm not I'm not big on chopping, but if he explained to me why he needed to do that and if somebody couldn't pay their rent or, you know what I mean, if it was that important to them, of course, you know, I, if, it, to me, if it's logical and they need it that badly, I can't imagine wanting to, you know, hurt their situation. But I don't know what, if they were going to get paid a, a nice amount of money by not chopping, then I wouldn't feel inclined to do that. Oh yeah, I don't it ever feel like a chicken I, feed at that point. Right, so <laughs> they were going to get paid either way, right? Oh yeah. Then oh, I would, yeah. then I would, then I would let it be my decision, and I imagine at that point. But who says that I wouldn't have somewhere to be? That I, I don't know, you know, I'd need to know all the details. But in general, I'd rather not chop. I like to play it out. Good deal. All right. And the last one we have for you today is: When did you last have to leave when it was just getting good? In completely open to translation to whenever the last time you had to leave was when it was just getting good. When did I have to leave when it was just getting good? I remember playing um, in that uh, that 24-hour cash game in England. Um, I think uh, Party Poker sponsored that um, uh, I had been up for, you know, 24 hours before that, we I was uh, I had went deep in the World Series of Poker Europe the first right. time, and uh, they asked me to play in this, and I didn't realize you couldn't get any sleep before it, so I played for another 24 hours straight, and I was falling asleep at the table, and and that's when the game was just getting good, and, and I had to leave, um, and I had to get back to the states for another tournament. So I remember that the game was just starting to get juicy, and I had to leave. All right. Well, you've given us about 20 minutes of your time. I really appreciate it. Sure. And uh, thanks a lot for coming in. Do you My mind? Pleasure.